talk about Afghanistan. You cannot talk about Iran. You cannot talk about Iraq. You cannot talk about Pakistan without talking about Israel. You just can't do it. And it doesn't mean we're anti anybody, but we got to be clear on what's going on and who the players are. And, 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 and be willing to call into question the policies of our government. When you deal with war, it's about money, it's about land. It's about money, it's about land. And we have been so many times on the wrong side that infinitesimally we cannot count. We got to connect the dots. The biggest debate going on right now in our country is about health care. And they tried in their conference to get it below a trillion dollars over 10 years. We just heard in Afghanistan alone, in the past eight years, we spent more than a trillion dollars. And they want us to be fussing about health care. President Bush and his administration passed a tax cut of $2.5 trillion over a 10-year period for the rich. And we don't hear anything about that now. We could fund every American citizen's health care for more than 10 years with just the money we have wasted in Afghanistan. We can fund every American with total health care for more than 20 years on just the tax cut that the Bush administration gave to the rich, which totaled over $2 million. So tell them we ain't stupid. I'm not going to last night, but it wasn't last night. We got to start doing what Dr. King was talking about. And that's why next Tuesday discussion is going to be very critical as well. Dr. King signed his death warrant on April the 4th, 1967. Yes. At Riverside Church. When he gave that speech about Vietnam. And how the bombs and the cause of war in Vietnam will explode right here in America. I don't know whether you hear it or not, but I hear explosions all over the place. Explosions at Brady, explosions at City Hall, explosions at education. Everywhere we turn, they cut and cut and cut. And while they cut, they cut because of war in Afghanistan, in Iraq.
fact, I say, hell no. That's in the Bible. <laughs> it's in the Bible. Right. There comes a time when you got to put up a this shit. And what I like about it now, we'll put it on the line. We'll put it on the line. And maybe Atlanta needs to be that prototype. Maybe this new energy, this new movement needs to start in Atlanta, Georgia. Not waiting on some other city or some other group. Some other organization. Right here. Right now. We say no. And I don't care who's in the White House. We say no. I don't care who controls the Congress or who's over the industrial complex. We say no. And we say no for our children and for their future. And for the children in Gaza. For the children in Israel. For the children in Afghanistan. For the children in Iraq. For the children of the world. Who is saying no for them? Who is speaking for them? Who is representing them? Who is standing for them? Who is dying for them? I no longer tell God about how big the problems are. Now I tell the problems how big my God is. My God is bigger than war. He's bigger than death. He's bigger than lies and deceptions. And whatever we can do for justice and truth and ultimately for the children, all children, not just children who look like your children, or my children, but all children, we can put an end to war. There's going to come a day when they'll beat their swords in the plowshares, in their spears, in their pruning hooks, and we will, as a civilized people, come to the conclusion that war is obsolete. That day gonna come. So y'all didn't think we'd have a black president. Oh, I thought did, but that day came. I didn't think yes, two years ago. But it, it's here. It's a reality. Yes. The day will come when people around the world.